Okay friends, one of the first things we have to do to get started on this job would be to raise and support the front of the truck so the wheel's off the ground. After that, remove all eight of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. So the first thing we're going to do is move right along here and we're going to crack open our banjo bolt. Let's pinch off the brake hose. Let's give this a nice wiggle. Now let's give it a not so nice wiggle. Start with the top one, we'll loosen it, leave it in a couple threads. There it is friends. Now we need to hold this rotor so it doesn't flop around. So I'm just gonna take a spacer and my lug nut. We'll snug this up on here so that way there no rust can fall behind the rotor while we're working. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the pads out of here. Just slide it like this, take it out of its bracket. Inspect your pads, make sure they're still in good condition. If it looks like they're worn or damaged in any way, now's the time to go ahead and replace them. Grab these clips as well. Now over on the bench, what we want to do with our new caliper is disassemble it and lubricate everything. So I'm going to go ahead and remove our caliper slider bolts here. We'll set the caliper aside and we're going to start working on the bracket. Now what we need to do to this caliper bracket to start preparing it is to remove the slider from the bracket. Okay, with that off of there, I'm going to continue on to cleaning down the shaft area of the slider. And now we're going to reapply some lube to this. When I do it, I'm going to coat the entire shaft of it, and I want to get all the way up into this area approximately where my fingers are. You can see where there's a groove, that's where the boot's going to ride, and it's very important to have grease in there. Now that we have that all covered, let's go ahead and put our boot on here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and slide our slider in here. Squeeze out any air that's inside the boot, and then give this a couple twists. There we are. Now let's do the same to the other one. With both sliders done, the next thing we want to continue on is to lubing these four mounting points along the bracket. That's going to be the areas where the tins ride, and this is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Now it's going to be time to put our tins on here. Look closely at it. You're going to see that it has this little flippy do, and then on the back side, it has another little flippy do here. You want to make sure that you have this so it's facing away from where the rotor's going to be. Of course, the rotor's going to be in the middle of the caliper. So you don't want to go ahead and put it on this side and then have a major issue when you go to install it. I'm just going to slide it right on here. There we are. Now we'll do the same to all four corners. Once you have all your tins on there, we're going to set the bracket aside. Let's move over to the caliper now. There's going to be some places that we need to lubricate on this as well. We want to go along both of these pistons, and then along all three of these ears. Once again, this is for vibration dampening and noise reduction. Now it's going to be time to get our caliper bracket onto the truck. Go ahead and line it up where it needs to be. Take both of your bolts with some red thread locker, start them in, we'll snug them up, and then we're going to torque them to 166 foot-pounds. <laughs> Now it's going to be time to install our brake pads and our clips. For the brake pads, just go ahead and take it, slide it into its grooves, and then push it in up against the rotor. Once you have the pair of them in there, you're going to continue on to putting on these clips. You want them to fit into the corresponding holes, right along here like this, facing down towards the center of the rotor. For this one, I'll have it facing the opposite direction, once again towards the center. Now we can take our caliper and slide it over this. Take your slider bolts, start them in. Snug them up. And now torque it to 42 foot pounds. Now it's time to get the flex hose on the caliper. When you do this, you want to make sure that it's facing in this direction. We have the bump coming up and over this slider bolt area and then coming forward and swooping. Now when you go to put in your banjo bolt, you're going to want to make sure you have one of your gaskets on the banjo bolt. Go ahead and slide it through that brake hose. Take your other gasket, put it along the bottom. That's going to go in between the flex hose and the caliper. Start it in there and snug it up. Okay, so I have this so it's bottomed out. Now the next thing I want to do is just turn it a little bit more, maybe approximately a quarter of a turn. We want to make sure we crush those gaskets down. 
There we are. Give it a nice wiggle, make sure it's secured. Let's get this off of here. Okay, so now at this point, what we want to do is move our collection bucket so it's going to be underneath this area. We're going to go ahead and open up this bleeder screw, and then we're going to let this gravity bleed. Essentially, what I mean by that is let it try to burp out all the air on its own by pushing the fluid down here by gravity. Okay, so we've got fluid running out of here. We're going to go ahead and close this off. Now what you need to do is a manual bleed. Now it's going to be time to manually bleed your brakes. To do that, you want to, of course, make sure that your master cylinder is full under the hood. After that, it's nice to have a second person for this because you're going to have somebody sitting in the car and they're going to be the person pumping the brake pedal. Somebody else needs to be on the outside right here getting ready to open up this bleeder screw. Essentially what you're going to want to do after the master cylinder is full is have the person inside the car pump up the brake pedal. Once it's nice and firm, they're going to hold it and keep holding. Once they're holding it, you're going to come out here, open up the bleeder screw, they're going to feel the pedal go down a little bit. You want to watch to see if any air comes out of this bleeder screw. If air comes out, go ahead and close it off, have them pump it again three to five times slowly, hold it, and then you open it again. Repeat this process a couple times until you have no more air coming out of your bleeder screw. After you're done, make sure you get back up under the hood and double check your master cylinder. And of course, throughout this process, double check and make sure you don't have any brake fluid leaks, either right out the caliper or even up near the line. Let's get this off of here, grab the wheel and get it on there. Once all your lug nuts are on, we're going to continue on by snugging them up. Once they're all snug, we'll get the wheel on the ground and then we're going to torque all these lug nuts to 165 foot-pounds. Okay, the wheel's on the ground, torque them to 165. Torqued. So we've got our DOT3 brake fluid. We're gonna go ahead and fill up the master cylinder so it's at the maximum line. 